on the phone and then texting on another phone while driving? Are you kidding me? That's a bit crazy. Why don't you take the train? You obviously don't want to drive. We got our friend today. Not sure if I have mentioned it. I actually met him. Really cool guy. That's a that's a 300, not a 250. It's a nice bike. It looks pretty good. So I'm not sure if I'm the only one that has this problem. No, we're making it. Shit. I'm not sure if I'm the only one with this issue, but the video on the on the GoPro 3, not the Plus, flickers. I, the last few vlogs I've noticed it, and it's been getting worse. I just had to trash a whole vlog because it was so bad that it just looked like a strobe light. I don't know what's going on with the thing, but it's starting to make sense to me now why more people have the drift. Oh, so anyway, what's new? Well, here in Texas, we are welcoming Ebola. I don't know if anyone's seen the news lately, but they're, they had to make an emergency landing on a, on a plane in, in Dallas. They, uh, someone, a uh, passenger was showing symptoms of Ebola, but they, they weren't sure. So they just confirmed. It is Ebola. So it, is, it has finally made its way into the States. Which isn't good. I don't know if any of you have followed Ebola, but it's pretty deadly. It's really bad. Um, fortunately, uh, it is not an airborne virus like the flu. Um, there is no seventh gear. Why do I do that? Uh, it is only transferred via fluids, bodily fluids, so in contact with, uh, you know, the nasties. You can get it. But still, you know, if someone sneezes on you, someone uh, dribbles on a toilet seat and you sit on it, you know, potential issues right there. It, it's. It, it's, it can still spread quickly. It's pretty. It's pretty scary. So there's uh, there's that going on. your hands you know a lot especially if you're in the Dallas area there's a lot of people on that plane any any person on that plane can now possibly be carrying it so I haven't checked the news today on it in the, or anything but I'll check it later see what they say This is a 55 zone construction and the cops love to hang out down here. So our uh, Ninja 300 friend, it's his uh, first bike, which uh, it's kind of how I started on the 250. Uh, 300 obviously a little bit more powerful, marginally. But um, there's also a lot of 
Yeah, you're gonna get a ticket. I would love to see somebody get pulled over. But there's a lot of uh, debate all over the internet. Should you start with a 250 or 300, 600 or a 1000? And the answer is you can start with any of those. It depends on uh, on you. And uh, one of the things that's not really mentioned frequently is cost. If you have the if you have the, the money to go out and buy a brand new CBR 1000 as your first bike, more power to you. And granted, uh, it's geared a little bit more for track, so it, you can get yourself into a sticky situation relatively quickly with the power, but it's not impossible to learn on. It's not really the best choice if you've never ridden a bike before, but it's not impossible. Uh, I know going from a, a 250, which I outgrew real fast, uh, to a 600, the difference is, is, is intense. The 250 is about the, about the speed of your average car. Um, however, mine was a Hyosung, so the build quality was so bad that it, it, would, it would tank slap on perfectly straight, flat, smooth surface, which is the main reason I got rid of it. But it's about as fast as your, your average car. Now, the, the 600 is a big step up from that. This is a lot faster. This uh, this will this will kind of keep up with my uh, my friend's uh, GTR, which is a feat in and of itself. And the GTR still smokes me because of all the, the nanny features, but it'll keep up with it. He does a ride in the line, and that's a lot of power to start with if you're not sure what you're doing. And I kind of eased myself into it as well. I didn't just jump on and go. But from a beginner standpoint, I think if you've ridden dirt bikes your whole life and you want to try and ride street, I don't think you would have any problem starting out on a 600. I really don't. It's not like, oh my God, ridiculous. But it's pretty quick. But they're a lot lighter. They're a lot more forgiving. Especially around corners, they you know they stop a little bit better and whatnot. So if you could afford one, I'd recommend that for your first bike. A lot of people you don't want to buy a brand new a 300, brand new like our friend did, because you you will outgrow that pretty fast. You will want something faster once you kind of learn how to ride and get the feel and the hang of it. You're gonna want something quicker because it's everyone's got something quicker. Unless you're strictly commuting and that is it, then you know, maybe it's a different story, but if you buy that brand new and you drop four or five thousand dollars, you're done with it in say six months, the depreciation on that is so bad, you're only gonna be able to sell it for three. You're gonna you're gonna lose your ass on that bike. But you know, if you got the cash for it, it's fine, but if you buy a 600, you know, they tend to use one especially, they tend to hold their value pretty well. Um, you, you, you won't outgrow that quite as fast. And I've had this bike for almost two years and I definitely haven't outgrown it. I have never really had the opportunity to really romp on it, to really peg it out on the street. So I have no need to upgrade really, but it turns into a finance thing. can't see me. Man, I am really tired today. I don't know what my deal is. I'm dragging it. So that's my two cents. Whether it be good or bad, I don't care right now. I don't want to think. This might not even make it past the cut and get online. Whatever. Hey, if you like my videos, please subscribe. Like, comment, suggest, whatever you want to do. Until then, I will see you guys later. Peace.